After nearly a month of fun in Honduras and Guatemala, it is time to head home. As I waited for the inevitable end of this epic journey on the docks of San Juan La Laguna, I had this gut-wrenching feeling. Is it fear? Is it regret? Is it disappointment? As I jumped onto the Lancha boat heading back to Panajachel, I realized it was raining, both outside on the turbulent waters, but also in my heart. Wait, I got it. It is all coming back. This is a familiar feeling, an old friend that I have not met in a few years. Every single time I finish a great adventure, a trip worth remembering for a lifetime, I always get this unbelievably dreaded feeling. Like my heart was slowly sinking, realizing those moments of absolute fun and enjoyment cannot be had ever again. But at the same time, the conflicted mind also tells me there is another side to this. I can get to savor these good times when I'm away, and come back next time for even more unforgettable memories and a revisit to those old friends. Four-legged, two-legged, or no-legged. On the last chicken bus crawling back towards Antigua, I found myself surprisingly appreciative of this journey ending, because I really do not have too much time to reflect what I did in the past three weeks, as every day was filled with all kinds of activities and surprises, whether it comes from amazing sceneries, friendly locals, or fellow travelers. But this brief end of my first trip after the pandemic will help me gather my thoughts and adjust me to the new world of traveling. It is true. Traveling has stopped being the same. Hell, the world has stopped being the same. And I'm not sure if the travel sphere can ever return to what it was before, or even the world will ever return to how it was like in the good old days of 2015. On the flight departing Guatemala City, I watched the Volcan Fuego erupt for one last time, and suddenly, I was overwhelmed with happy thoughts. What an epic journey! Not only did I get to see a volcano erupt as I am literally flying away, I also got to see the unreasonable lies a lot of the others claimed about the so-called most dangerous city of San Pedro Sula. It was full of bustling markets and hard-working people. I got to visit one of the most majestic Mayan ruins in the world, full of ancient glyphs, unbelievable and unadulterated. They were so clear and complex that they can even be compared to the modern Japanese language. Meanwhile, a few miles outside the ruins hidden deep in the jungles, the town of Copan Ruinas is full of adventures and real challenges, good food, and even better people. Wild, real Macau parrots were flying on their ancestors' land thanks to their help, unseen anywhere else in the world. And as I crossed into Guatemala, I found even more quirky locals on a path less trodden, with a special meal tucked between breakfast and lunch, as well as a modern Guatemala city that a lot of tourists mistakenly avoid, thinking it is some kind of a violence-ridden war zone. While during the day it is perfectly safe, and dare I say pleasant, to walk around. The highlight of the trip comes with Antigua, as I got surrounded by a bunch of local students, walked all around the local markets just to befriend a lady selling chili peppers, and you know what happened next. No! But embarrassment aside, this was absolutely a gorgeous town full of stunning ruins. Whether it is a brightly colored arch, a dilapidated cloister, or a completely crumbled cathedral, all history subsides here, forming layers upon layers of story. On the hills, a few miles away, Hobbitenango is a little piece of heaven that happened to fall onto earth. And do I need to emphasize how much I love Antigua? And yes, that is despite the fact that someone pulled a gun on me. And that is a story that you have to check out yourself in the video linked on the top right. And yet, it gets even better. I found myself climbing closer and closer to an erupting volcano, Acatenango, with the rolling cornfields, ancient ruins, mountain fogs passing beside me, and eventually, the patient ones get rewarded by Mother Nature. As the spewing lava coupled with sonic shockwave blew me away, literally and figuratively. A well-deserved break then took place after an exciting ride on the Central America famous chicken bus towards the capital of Lake Atitlan region, Banahashel. With its volcanic view on the lakefront to the animal-filled natural reserve, I was truly enjoying life. Hey look, I even have a buttery issue to deal with on my hand, huh? Huh? 
Finally, the epic journey ended with a tour around the absolutely mind-blowingly beautiful Atitlan Lake. A cannonball, a tag with the local kids, a meal by the view, a morning sunrise, a prayer, and so, so much more. Push this trip to its most hyper state. This is the absolute pinnacle of a vacation. No, this should be the life everyone strives to live. I decided to visit Honduras and Guatemala because it was easier and closer to get to. But I left with my expectations completely shattered. These two nations, during my brief glimpse, provided me with more than I can ever imagine. Historians call these two countries banana republics, as they served no purpose other than providing United States literally one kind of yellow squishy fruit while being enslaved by giant corporations. But their notions no longer stand. Honduras and Guatemala boast some of the best sceneries, histories, and people I have met while traveling around the world. This region is so enriched in every single facet of life that every traveler should put it on the list and then bring it to the top. Hell, you should be watching this on the fly to Guatemala City or San Pedro Sula already. From the shackles of 19th century capitalism birthed a new Guatemala and Honduras. Like phoenixes from the ashes, these two giants now stand side by side as great powers of influence not only in the world, but also in my heart. And no, they are banana republics. No more. Now roll the montage of sweet memories and let's enjoy this journey one last time.